Good day, everyone. My name is Rich Chester, and I'm the Director of Business Intelligence at LPA Software Solutions. It's my pleasure to be with you today to talk about two topics. First of all, what's new in the IBM Cognos Analytics Release 10, otherwise known as version 11.0.10, and talk to you about upgrading to Cognos Analytics. You submitted a bunch of questions prior to this webinar uh, that I've incorporated into a set of slides, and it's my goal today to answer as many of those questions for you while we're together as possible. But before we get started with that, I just want to remind you that all of our webinars, including this one, are recorded, and they're all available on LPA.com in our resources area. Uh, we have such webinars on business intelligence as what's new in each of the different Cognos Analytics releases, uh, we have a full webinar on data modules, another one on dashboards. Um, in addition to business intelligence topics, we also have uh, topics on various types of analytics, uh, predictive analytics, advanced analytics, uh, TM1, and financial performance management. So there are many, many webinars that we have recorded and are part of this library. They're all free. Uh, just go to lpa.com resources to get them. Also, all of our webinars are posted on our YouTube channel, so whichever channel makes sense for you, YouTube or the LPA.com website, we'd love to have you take advantage of this uh, education resource. LPA has a full suite of offerings, uh, especially in the business intelligence area, which is what I'm part of. Here is a uh, selection of those for you to consider, and perhaps LPA can help you uh, potentially with your upgrade needs or just your ongoing needs as you work with analytics in your environment. For example, we do have a full suite of upgrade and migration services. It doesn't matter where you're starting, whether it's Cognos 8 uh, or 10, uh, or even you're already on one of the earlier releases of 11. We can help you with installations and configurations. We can upgrade your models. We can uh, test your content. We can help you with go live and roll out. Whatever makes sense for you, we would love to have a chance to chat with you about it. Also, if you are a current Cognos 7 user of Impromptu or PowerPlay, um, we have done a, a large number of migrations over the past couple of years from Cognos 7 to Cognos 10 and now Cognos 11, uh, migrating uh, catalogs, reports, uh, anal analyses, and power cubes. So again, if you are looking to upgrade or move to the current version of Cognos, uh, we would love to have a chance to chat with you about how we might be able to help. We also have a full suite of managed services where we will help you with your administration, maintenance, and ongoing support of your Cognos Analytics environment, perhaps freeing you up to do other value-added things uh, for your organization. If you have a reporting backlog, or you have a collection of reports where you just need some burst capacity for development, uh, we have an entire uh, services offering uh, using our Buffalo-based team to uh, rapidly and accurately create reports for you. If your systems are running slow or you're not quite sure if your systems are uh, configured in the best possible way, perhaps one of our health check offerings that would look at your Cognos environment, your data source environment, or both uh, would be of value to help you uh, ensure that you're getting the most out of your software and hardware investment. And then finally, we have a complete suite of training services. We have a number of classes that we have authored ourselves, uh, as well as we have the ability to resell and deliver any of the IBM written training classes that you would be familiar with. So anything from administration and authoring to active reports to the new features like dashboards, data modules, and data sets, dynamic cubes, you name it. We can help train on it so that you can continue to, again, get the most bang out of your analytics investment buck. So if you have any of these needs, if any of this sounds interesting, please reach out to us at sales at lpa.com. Uh, it would be our privilege and pleasure to chat with you about your needs and potentially talk to you about how LPA might be a fit. Now, let's talk about what's new 
in Cognos Analytics Release 10. Here is a list of the new features as well as a, uh, a little statistic about the uh, number of defects that are addressed in this release. As you can see, the list is rather short. Um, however, there are a couple of very uh, significant and let's say long awaited enhancements that are part of release 10. First enhancement that I think a lot of us have been looking forward to is the ability to uh, map drill throughs from your dashboard or story. Uh, to a report. So I'll do a demonstration of uh, how to enable this drill through capability. Uh, I've already written my drill through reports and my dashboards. I'm just going to show you how to link them up. So I'll review the reports, I'll review the dashboards, and then we'll connect the reports to the dashboard. Also that same dashboard, I'll show you how you can use the new feature that would allow you to print your dashboard to PDF output. In the world of data modules, there is an enhancement that um, is an important one, uh, especially if you've ever had the experience of creating a data module against a data source to uh, find that you need to change data sources afterwards. That actually was not something supported in previous releases. Now there's this notion of relinking a data source in your data module that I will show you a quick example of. Under the general category, there is a new feature for you to create a URL in either team content or my content that will allow you to specify a uh, website to open or a file to open when the URL is clicked. So I'll do a quick demonstration of that. The job function has been moved. Uh, it was a part of the manage button and um, that was a challenge in some ways because giving folks the manage button um, and not giving them uh, administrative access was something of a challenge. Um, now the job function is under the new button, which um, takes away that whole challenge and instead um, makes it very easy for your end users to create jobs. There is a new authentication entry uh, in the authentication portion of your Cognos configuration. Uh, so there's a new Open ID Connect proxy uh, that you can configure to help you with single sign-on and trusted sign-on from uh, your OpenID Connect uh, authentication sources. And then finally, there were 126 APARs and over 947 defects that were addressed in release 10. So uh, like releases eight and nine, IBM has been focusing a lot over the last six months or so on product stability to address the, uh, the defects um, small and large that um, we may have encountered as we've used uh, earlier versions of the product. Throughout today's webinar, please use the WebEx chat feature to submit any questions that you might have. I will attempt to uh, answer as many of those questions at the end of the webinar as I can. If I do run out of time before we run out of questions, I promise to answer any of the questions you submit via email after the webinar is over. Now, just like releases eight and nine, the enhancements that I read through for release 10 came from the IBM Request for Enhancement community website. These were enhancements that end users like yourselves have submitted on this um, free website. You uh, go to the website, which is here on the screen. That's the uh, developer work slash RFE website. You create a profile that's free. You know, once you are logged in, you can see uh, enhancements that folks have submitted. You can review those and vote for the ones that you would like to see in the product. IBM looks at this community and leverages the enhancements that get the most votes, plain and simple. So you can add your own enhancement requests um, if you make folks aware of them and they vote for them, as well as you should log in every once in a while and just scan through all of the recently entered enhancements and vote for the ones that you would like to see added to the product. IBM uses the largest vote getters as candidates to include in releases. And in, in truth, the, the uh, nearly all of the enhancements that I listed for release 10 came from this RFE community. So do take advantage of that feature, that, that voice to IBM that we all have access to. Now, in terms of the drill through from a dashboard or a story, uh, doesn't matter, uh, to a report, 
uh, it is part of the visualizations. So you can define a drill path by clicking on any visualization. There is a drill button and that will allow you to define one or more uh, reports that you would like to link to and also map columns that are in the visualizations on your dashboard to parameters in those reports. And that's the uh, essence of the demo that I'm going to do for you today is I'll show you how that mapping works. Uh, I will actually map two reports. Um, I'm going to start with a dashboard that I created from relational data and I will link that to both a drill through report from relational data and also a drill through report from a queue. So I'll do that link first. Then I will do, um, uh, I have a second tab in this dashboard and that dashboard was sourced from a power cube. And I will show you that I can also connect the PowerCube visualizations to those same two drill through reports. Um, so as you probably just figured out, you can have one more, uh, more than one path from uh, the same data item in a visualization. Once you have defined a drill through, when you right click on a value like I did in the screenshot, I right clicked on the value mountaineering equipment because I had defined a drill through that includes that column in the mapping. Um, this drill through button appears. I can click on the drill through button. It passes mountaineering equipment to the mapped parameter. And in the case of my reports, it will filter the data to mountaineering equipment data. So we'll see how all of that works in the demonstration. You also now have the ability to print dashboards to a PDF and print is the operative word in that. The way this is implemented is it uses your browser print to PDF capability. Now, depending on your operating system and depending on the browser you use, we'll have different options relative to this print to PDF. Um, and in some cases, you may actually have to install a print to PDF printer on your PC to actually save the output. I'm going to be using Chrome in my example and built into Chrome is a save to PDF capability. And that's what I will show you um, with this. The browser specific details could be very important as well as optimizing the output so that you get the best possible fidelity. On my screen is a link to a particular document from IBM that really takes you through lots of combinations of browsers um, and tells you the settings to set as well as the whole process to follow. It may be worth screenshotting this screen if you're interested to get that link. You can also just uh, Google for this and it will come up in, the, in your Google search results. But I will show you this export to PDF. Um, you must be consuming the dashboard for the export to be possible. You can't export a dashboard or story that you are um, editing. In terms of this relink notion, uh, in a data module on the left hand side, you have a panel called sources and in there you'll see the list of sources that you have added to your data module. If you hover over um, or click on uh, each one, there'll be a more button um, and the two options now that are underneath the more button in your list of sources uh, includes relink. Relink allows you to select another source of the same type. So you would not uh, um, relink a uh, data server to a uh, or an uploaded file uh, or a, a package to a uh, data set. Uh, it's like for like remapping. Although as you'll see, the, the process you'll follow does actually make you select the type of uh, item you're relinking. Um, the documentation specifically states it must be like for like. Uh, but you'll see the process when I do our, my, my quick demo. Once you have successfully relinked, you save and immediately all of your existing dashboards and reports that use the data module will get updated. Any issues that are found during the mapping, um, you'll see in the exp uh, validation tab. This create a URL notion. So at the top of either team or my content, you'll find a plus sign. And it used to be that that's how you created folders. And that was the only functionality there. Starting with R10, there's now a little menu that pops up that would actually give you access to creating a new folder or creating a URL. And on the right hand side of my screen, you see the different uh, components that are uh, part of defining your URL. 
Now, the most important thing relative to the URL is this. Um, your Cognos administrator must have whitelisted domains that you wish to leverage in your URL. In other words, there is a firewall, the Cognos uh, access firewall that's baked into Cognos and um, by default allows no URLs. So to really leverage this um, function, I, I should restate that, allows no URLs that are not the Cognos server itself. Um, so if you wanted to leverage your own uh, website for your corporation or external websites like YouTube um, or LPA, and you wanted to create a URL for that, first step is your Cognos administrator must go and update the Cognos configuration to whitelist those domains, and then you can leverage those domains in a URL. Also, I know I, I found I had uh, errors coming up whenever I tried to use a URL, um, and I ultimately discovered, oh, my pop-up blocker was on. And so when I clicked on the URL, I got a message that the URL couldn't be launched. had nothing to do with Cognos. It had to do with my browser uh, uh, blocking the pop-up. That was a natural part of clicking on the URL. So don't let that, uh, um, that little problem uh, be your problem. Uh, make sure you disable your pop-up blocker. The new job function very simply has moved uh, to the new button, which makes a whole lot of sense to go create a new job. You click on new. Used to be you had to click on manage, um, and a lot of us don't want to give the manage button to non-administrators. Also, isolating it to just jobs and no other entries there did take some work. This far more natural way for uh, job functionality to be available to your end users. So that is the collection of enhancements. Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, drill through and the print on dashboards. And um, here is a dashboard that I have created that I want to build a drill through from. Um, you must have the reports you're going to drill to already authored. So what I'm going to do is show you those two reports before we uh, actually map the dashboard to them. So here is a drill through report that I created from a relational package. So I'm going to edit this report just to show you the basic uh, layout. This is a list report. At the top, um, unnecessary to the actual functioning of the drill through, but interesting from the point of view of seeing what was passed from the dashboard. I um, put a uh, couple of layout calculations to show the data being passed to this report from the dashboard. So we'll see that at the top of the report when it runs. Um, let me show you, though, the important part, I think, which is the query for this dashboard. So in the query, I have two optional filters. The first one has a parameter called P product line. Um, and it allows one or more product lines to be passed in and used in this filter. The second one is called P region. Um, and again, one or more regions to be passed in and used in this filter. Um, neither might be part of the drill through, um, one or both might be part of the drill through that comes from the dashboard. So this is the important bit. The parameters here are what allows me to map the, the uh, uh, dashboard columns to the report for use in filtering. In other words, that's what links the data between the two. So that's my relational report. I'm going to uh, also show you my cube report. Now, my cube report, I had to do um, something um, a little extra um, because I know that I want to drill through from um, um, either relational data or uh, uh, cube source data in my dashboard. Now, when I pass relational data to a cube report, I can't um, uh, just pass to a filter on the, the dimensional data. In other words, I have to have like for like data. It might be easier to show you than to try to tell you first. So let me edit and show you. I have four filters here, not just two. But they accomplish the same thing that these two filters in my relational report do. It allows me to specify one or more product lines or one or more regions. The difference is that when a relational dashboard element is passing data to be filtered um, is different than it when a cube sourced visualization in a dashboard is passing data 
to my report. The cube sourced data is going to pass a member unique name to the parameter. The relational data can't do that. It can only pass over um, what we would call in the cube world the caption of the data I want. So I actually created four filters. Two of them, this one, refer reference a level in a dimension and filter it to a passed-in product line. And that's the same thing with retailers. And then these two filters are to receive relational data, not dimensional data from the dashboard. Um, and so I have uh, um, built a couple of calculations that derive the captions for these items. And then I am going to filter to matching captions. Now, if you've never worked with cube data, this notion of member unique names and captions may not, may not make a lot of sense. Um, and that's okay. Um, and and it, you know, it, the demonstration I'll do will still, I hope, make a certain amount of sense. But for those of you who um, are in the world where you work with both relational and dimensional data, hopefully you understand that relational data filtering a cube requires that I do something other than just a straightforward filter on my dimensional data because you filter dimensional information and a detail filter by specifying members, not by specifying text. So relational data would be considered text to a cube report. So I had to do something a little bit special here. So for you cube folks, hopefully this makes sense. If you're not a cube person, no harm, no foul. Uh, I still believe that the first mapping I do will make uh, a bunch of sense. So at least that's my hope. So with that as background, let me just uh, remove these two reports from my switcher. And let me go ahead now and map my data. Now, this first tab of data, I've got uh, three tabs. This first tab of data is uh, sourced from um, a package, actually the same package that I wrote my drill through report from. The second one is sourced from cube data. And this, again, the very same cube uh, as I wrote my uh, drill through uh, report from. Okay. And then this last tab is strictly for the demo when I show you how to print to PDF. So we can ignore this as far as the drill through goes. This is just to show you what happens when I print to PDF when I have a large list of data on a tab in my dashboard. So relational data. So this is data from a package, and I'd like to link this and pass the region and the product line that my user selects to that drill through report. So I'm going to select the item and bring up the on-demand toolbar. Notice I am in edit mode. Here is the drill through definition button. I'm going to go ahead and click it. And you see I have no drill throughs defined yet, but I can click add a new drill through. When I click that, it will pop up a navigator and I will navigate to those two reports that I showed you in a moment ago. Let me map the relational data first. So this is relational data to relational data. Um, I have two parameters called P product line and P region. Cognos was smart enough to figure out that those are the two columns I probably want to uh, map. Uh, you do always want to check if there's any guesses here. There isn't always guesses, by the way, but when Cognos guesses, just make sure they're right. In this case, they're exactly right. I'll go ahead and hit apply, and that will take care of that. I'm going to add a second drill through. So I'll click again. That's left click on my item, bring up the drill through definition button. Notice there is the one that's there, but I can also do manage. And I'll add the second drill through. This time it will be to my cube report. So again, I'll navigate and drill through, navigate to my cube. Again, I have to map. Now in this case, remember I had um, four filters and this is relational data to cube. So I'm going to map to the caption parameters that I have in my drill through report. So I will map my columns as shown. I'll click apply. And then I'll click apply again. And now my drill throughs are defined. So in both of these uh, uh, visualizations are sourced from the same data. Therefore, the drill through definition I defined on my left visualization actually has been inherited by my right side visualization. 
So on either, if I right click on a value, I'll right click on Americas, I will get a drill through button. This button exists because I have defined drill throughs. I'll go ahead and click it and it's going to ask me, all right, which one would you like to go to? I'll go to the relational data first, where I will get a, uh, a new report will run. It will run. It's going to show me at the top the data that was passed. So I just did this little thing at the top. Not necessary to the functioning of the report, but I wanted you to see that America's is what was passed here. And the uh, uh, data here has been filtered to region Americas. If I page down, there are no other regions in my report. Now, my dashboard is still open. If I use my switcher, you see I go back to my dashboard and I could drill through on another value uh, or I could drill through to my cube report. I'm going to go ahead um, and over in the bar chart, I'm going to right click on camp equipment and I'm going to do the drill through and this time I'll use the cube as my drill through. And you see it passed camping equipment to the product line caption and indeed filtered this report to just the camping equipment data as I would want it to. So that's relational data to either a relational or an OLAP report that I've shown you there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove uh, these drill throughs. And then I'm going to show you one more thing. Let's suppose that I um, right clicked on region and added a filter to this visualization. And so this would be a local, quote unquote, local filter. I'm going to go ahead and add two values. And then I'm going to click on the visualization and do a drill through. So I'm going to drill through. Now, I didn't pick a particular value for the regions. I, I, I just said drill through on the visualization. And notice that the local filter is what was passed to the uh, parameter. So that's uh, uh, worth noting. That's, uh, uh, I think, quite a, a sensible and valuable um, way for the drill throughs to work. So I just wanted to show you that. Now I see for this part of my uh, webinar, I am um, starting to run out of time. So rather than uh, map the cube data over, because it is essentially the same uh, activity, I want to show you quickly the other enhancements. Uh, to show you the print capability, I'm going to switch from edit mode to view mode. I'll go to the more button here in the upper right and note export to PDF. Now you'll get this pop-up that asks you to pick a, 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 a paper size. Um, make sure you, you uh, pick the right size for your dashboard layout. In other words, if you've done an infographic, um, letter is probably not the right size. Um, and then pick your orientation. I'll go with landscape. Now I'll click OK. Now this is a multi-tab dashboard and Cognos will indeed print all of the tabs for me. It has now invoked the browser print capability and you actually see that uh, it shows the output here. Um, we're going to find that that list does show us something, a cautionary tale. Now the printer I've selected because this is Chrome, I have this option, um, is the save as PDF print destination. That's unique to Chrome. Um, it, there's a Microsoft print to PDF that's available in a number of versions of Microsoft. Um, you know, there, and that website that I told you about earlier kind of gives you some of the options that are out there. Um, but you could also install a, a PDF printer and use that on your PC. I'm just going to go ahead and save this guy to my desktop. And then I'll just quickly open it so you can see the actual output. So here's the uh, first page. There's the second page. Um, now, this page uh, is interesting. What I found with large lists, with data that is not entirely visible on the, um, the dashboard page itself, is that you only get the visible portion. And you see, I hadn't even caused the list to fully render before I printed. And therefore, as you can see, it didn't actually print anything. So the cautionary tale here, guys, is this. Um, be sure you've clicked through all your tabs before you print to PDF, number one, and make sure that all of your visualizations have rendered. Number two, when you have a visualization like a list or a cross tab that has a lot of data in it, 
the printout is only going to show whatever was visible before you clicked the uh, print option. So a little bit of a cautionary tale there, but this is a great improvement over having no way to export and distribute the uh, contents, what I am seeing on my dashboard page. So back to uh, Cognos Analytics. Um, the uh, More button um, is where you'll find Export to PDF. The other enhancement I'll just show you quickly is under the New button, there is Job now. It's no longer under Manage. Um, in terms of relinking a uh, data module, uh, it looks like I've run out of time to actually show you that in any detail, but it truly is as simple as exposing the source panel using the More button, choose Relink, and then that's a data server I'm relinking, so I could pick a different data server to link it to. And uh, you know, if you're going to go from a test data source to a production data source, um, which I think is a real use case for this, um, I click Done. I happen to know that these match up nicely. Uh, I've relinked now from one data source to another. Um, I know you've submitted uh, a couple of questions, and I do have a couple of them in front of me. I'll answer one of them um, just because I've, uh, I've run out of time, uh, which, as you know, if you're a frequent uh, listener on these webinars is pretty common for me. Um, the one I'll be able to answer um, uh, is this. Do these dashboard drill throughs use package based drill throughs I've already defined? Uh, you know, I did actually test that and no, those are not inherited by your dashboard. So even though the dashboard is authored from a package that has a drill through package based drill through already defined, those drill throughs are not inherited by the dashboard. You would need to remap them as part of the dashboard. So let's talk about the questions that you submitted uh, around upgrading to Cognos Analytics, not necessarily specifically to the latest release, which is release 10, uh, but to any version of Cognos Analytics. Thank you so much for submitting uh, all of your upgrade questions. Uh, I will try to answer as many as I can while we're together today. Um, of course, if you've submitted a question and I don't get to it today while we're on the air, uh, I will absolutely answer it for you via email after the fact. Also, if you didn't have a chance to submit questions and you want to submit them through the WebEx chat feature now, uh, I'd be uh, very happy for you to do that as well. So I've batched the ones that you guys sent me uh, together. I put them into, if you will, rough categories. Um, I'll chat through each category and try to answer as many questions in each category as I can. I'll try to keep an eye on the clock as well so that I don't spend too much time on one slide. Uh, otherwise, we'll never get to um, uh, the, the majority of the questions. Uh, so, and again, if you meant to submit a question but you didn't have a chance to, it's not too late, go ahead and submit it by the WebEx chat feature. At worst, I will answer it for you after uh, the webinar is over. I'll, I'll answer via email. So the first set of questions I got were really in general about upgrading, uh, you know, moving from 10 to 11 or moving from 11 to 11. Uh, you know, what are the process steps? You know, how long would it take? Are there things I should be doing before I upgrade? Things along those lines, especially for my 10 to 11 users. So the upgrade steps to go from 10 to 11 are really not much different than they were to go from 8 to 10 or for that matter, from 10 to 0 to 10 to 1 to 10 to 2. So uh, you need to prepare your uh, new environment. Uh, from 10 to 11, it is a completely new installation. This is not an install over the top kind of thing, uh, like a fix pack would be in Cognos 10. So you know a lot of folks have been uh, investing in different infrastructure, so, especially because they want to have 10 up while they test 11. Um, but if you uh, have a, a three server 10 environment today, you're going to want to have a three server 11 environment tomorrow with the same components, the web component, the uh, um, application component and the content manager components installed. The process is to install the new software, uh, make sure that you have um, installed the uh, latest uh, interim fix or fix pack, if that makes sense. Otherwise, you can download the GA versions from 
um, Passport Advantage. You do that installation, you do the configuration, and then you have to migrate your content. The two ways to migrate your content in 10 are the same way to go from 10 to 11, which is you can either do an, uh, a, an export from 10, copy the zip file to 11 and do an import, or you could make a database copy of your 10 content store database into a new database and point 11 to the new database and upgrade in place. Um, both are valid, both work. LPA typically recommends you use the export. Um, we believe that that gets you a cleaner content store on the other side because it won't export content for, let's say, uh, employees who are no longer with your company. So you get a, I think you might get a slightly better result from that perspective, but both are absolutely acceptable. Um, really no difference between what you went through from 10 to 2 to 11 from a steps perspective. You do not have to be on 10 to 2 with the latest and greatest fix pack before you upgrade. You can upgrade. Actually, I've done upgrades from 8.4. Um, up to the current version of 11. So there's no specific uh, need to get current with 10 before you go to 11. Also, there's no reason for you to um, uh, follow the 11 sequence. In other words, you can go from whatever you're on now, 8 fourth forward, to 11.0.10. You don't have to stop at 11.0 and 11.01 and 11.02. That's not necessary. A um, couple of other things that you're going to want to make sure that you do beforehand, those you're going to want to run content store maintenance, make sure that your content store, um, if it does have uh, old contents in it from folks who are no longer with the company that, that you delete that, that process will also ensure your content store has no gross issues that would prevent it from scanning through the content store for ownership um, uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, missing folks, things along those lines. Um, you're going to want to have, I believe you should have new hardware uh, or new VMs rather than try to install in place, although it is possible to install in place. Now, in terms of 11 to 11, that is an, uh, an upgrade in place. That is just like patching used to be in 10. So um, I have done a, a number of upgrades, uh, as you might imagine, right at LPA, we installed 11.0.0 and we've installed every version since. And each of those has been uh, an upgrade in place. And I have to say that the upgrade in place in the earlier versions, I had problems and I found that I uninstalled and reinstalled um, to uh, resolve those problems. Since around 11.0.4 though, I've done installs in place and they have just plain worked. Um, the uh, um, in-place upgrade doesn't require a ton of remediation, except um, when it comes to IIS. If you're using the optional gateway component, which is indeed considered optional, um, according to the documentation, um, it's only optional if you are not doing single sign-on and you do not want to browse to images when you're writing reports then in, indeed it might be truly an optional component, the gateway. But if you want to do single sign-on, you want to do browsing the images and reports, then you really need the gateway installed and web dev installed, um, just like you did in 10. Now, this gateway is vastly different than it was in 10. It is an entirely different component. And every time I've upgraded 6 to 7, 7 to 8, and so on, I have found that the best thing to do is to go through and remove all of my IIS settings and reconfigure uh, uh, IIS. Now, starting around, oh, if I had to guess, I'd say around release seven, but it might have been sooner. Uh, IBM started providing a script that will configure IIS for you, and that is by far the best way to go. So you, there's a, an undo the current configuration set of steps you go through, and then you run uh, the script that you've edited to let it know about where you installed Cognos and the name of your website and so on, and uh, let the script do the work for you, and that makes it very straightforward. So 11 to 11 is install in place, 11 to 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 7 to 8, 8 to 10, um, because you can skip. You don't have to go 6 to 7. Um, if you're on 6 and you want to go to 10, just go to 10. Uh, you do an install uh, overlaid as a patch. Um, in terms of user adoption, vast differences in navigation. Uh, so you will need to plan on education. No doubt that you're going to need to educate your end users how to use this new portal. 
Um, we're not talking days of education. We're talking hours of education. In fact, I've had a large number of clients uh, just create recordings and required that people take the recordings before they're authorized to log into version 11. Um, I've even had customers ask us to make the recordings for them. There is all kinds of training available. Uh, I mentioned earlier that LPA has a, uh, a bunch of training courses that we've written. They're all upgraded and updated to version 11. Um, and of course, we can teach any of the IBM um, sourced. And, and there are indeed other folks out there who um, do training. And there is self-paced training uh, that you can buy, um, again, through LPA, if you wish, the, uh, from IBM that will teach you these things. I think that um, teaching navigation is something that's you know, best done live and actually best done with your data. Um, in terms of teaching reporting, uh, we're using the new interface, uh, right? There, you know, the reporting interface has changed. There is a need to bridge your authors from the old interfaces of Report Studio and Workspace Advanced to the new reporting interface. Um, that I think is best, uh, most efficiently done in a classroom setting, uh, rather than having folks poke around and try to find things on their own. Um, you know, so a, a you know a what's new in reporting interface or a new reporting features type class I think makes a lot of sense. Then you've got the whole new um, collection of self-service capabilities, dashboards, data modules, um, stories, uh, data sets, uploaded files. Um, those are things that again you want to consider how you roll out um, because self-service with uh, Cognos is relatively new. Um, we're very used to a highly rigidly governed Cognos in the 10 and before. 11 gives us some opportunity for some real end user enablement, empowerment, and flexibility. We need to thoughtfully roll that out. Education is absolutely going to be part of that rollout, um, along with governance and you know just a collection of rules about how um, non-centrally sourced data is used within your organization. There's a lot of thought. But in terms of just overall upgrading, 11 to you, 10 folks um, is, or eight folks is a brand new install that you have to do from scratch. I believe if you can pull it off, new hardware is best. Um, 11 to 11 is a patch, an in-place upgrade. And the one thing that I recommend if you're using the, uh, the uh, gateway is that you completely reconfigure uh, your uh, web server component each time. Um, because there are different um, different requirements uh, each time is what I have found. And again, if you are an IIS uh, user, download the script from IBM. Just search for IIS configuration script on the IBM website, and um, it's updated periodically. There was an update uh, around mid-March, and well, that's the one you want to be sure you get. Um, and always look for an update whenever you do an upgrade so that you're running the latest and greatest script. In terms of my upgraded reports, uh, um, you know, there's questions about, do I have to touch them all? You know, do my packages come along for the ride? What about my active reports? What about JavaScript? Um, my power queues, you know, and, and that kind of thing. Um, and then there's this whole notion of co co compatible query mode and dynamic query mode. So let me try to answer as many of these as I can um, by saying this. When you upgrade from 8 or 10 to 11, you will find that all of your content, both your Report Studio reports, your Workspace Advanced reports, they will upgrade and become uh, part of the new reporting interface. Your Query Studio Analysis Studio reports will upgrade and will stay Query and Analysis Studio reports. And those two tools are indeed part of 11.0.x uh, uh, in your on-premise installs. They are not part of the IBM Cloud. So if you're moving to the IBM cloud, then you will have to, before you leave 10, my, uh, migrate those reports to Report Studio. Um, but if you're going to an on-premise from 10 prem to 11 prem, um, those reports will come over and function in 11 just as they are. Uh, your active reports will come over and they'll function exactly as they have. Your packages will be part uh, and parcel of that movement. And if you're using dynamic query mode, great. Um, you'll install your JDBC drivers and your DQM packages will work as is. If you're using compatible query mode, great. Make sure on your Cognos server you've installed your 32-bit drivers, just like you would on a Cognos 10 server. And then those packages and reports will work just as they did before. Because remember that Cognos 11 
versus Cognos 10.2.2 is more of a front end collection of changes and new capabilities, not so much a back end change what worked in 10.2.2. So the whole reporting service, the query service, the um, uh, batch report service, those things between 10.2.2 and 11 are virtually the same. And therefore, the upgraded reports, as well as the query service and the analysis service that run the Query Studio and Analysis Studio things, those services, those components, those pieces, parts of the back end, they haven't changed, really, uh, in 11. That's why these upgrades have been so, for the most part, um, very um, straightforward. And it is very seldom that we have to go and change um, reports as part of the upgrade. So working reports upgraded tend to be working reports and your legacy stuff all stays the same, uh, and your active reports all stay the same. Um, if you use JavaScript in your reports or you use the prompt API, when you upgrade, those reports will all still function. Um, and I have not, um, I have to say, I have not done hundreds of report upgrades with JavaScript in them, but I've done tens of reports with JavaScript in them, and they do tend to run as is, including those that are using the prompt API. And indeed, the prompt API is still part of the product. But here's the thing with JavaScript. Uh, Cognos has introduced another way to leverage JavaScript in Cognos 11 that has to do with the fact that 11 has two different viewers, modes, if you will, for running reports. Classic mode and a fully interactive mode. So let me explain quickly. The classic mode is the Cognos 10 report viewer. And that, by the way, all of your upgraded reports and workspace advanced reports will come set to run in the classic viewer, which is essentially the 10.2.2 viewer. And that's why JavaScript and HTML items um, and the whole uh, prompt API that you might be using and all of that works in 11 is because the classic viewer from 10.2.2 is baked into 11. And it's the viewer that implements your JavaScript right, the viewer and your browser. Now, the um, other uh, viewer in Cognos 11 is called the fully interactive viewer. That uh, is the default for new reports in Cognos 11, and it does not work with the same JavaScript approach that you used in 10, um, or that you can still use in the classic viewer in 11. Um, this is a server-side JavaScript approach, not an embedded in my report studio report JavaScript approach. Um, and uh, there's good uh, uh, goodness in having server-side includes and that kind of thing. Um, and there is, um, you know, a whole new interface for how you address objects on the page and so on. And lucky for us, IBM has provided eight or nine examples of using JavaScript in this interactive viewer. Uh, they're installed automatically when you install Cognos 11.0.10. Uh, they're out in the samples folder that's out on your Cognos server, um, and you can configure those to run, uh, and you can learn how to use this new JavaScript approach by examining those samples. There is a setup required for those samples to work. Um, the the setup instructions are best found by Googling. So if you Google on the IBM.com website, right, if you Google um, JavaScript sample setup instructions, you'll find the Cognos 11 setup instructions that'll walk you through how to set them up if you're using the gateway or if you're not using the gateway. And you can indeed set up your samples, uh, uh, those new samples, and learn how to use JavaScript in the Cognos 11 environment. And the, the, these uh, samples, that I'm talking about in those instructions, they're really all, they all came out at the same time as 11.0.10. So um, if you've looked at them before, you may need to look at them again uh, in 11.0.10 just to get the latest and greatest. But the reason that reports upgrade and work is because for the most part, the uh, um, reports uh, run in uh, the Cognos viewer that they used to run in in version 10. So if they ran in version 10, they're, they're, you know, there's a 99% chance they're going to run the very same way uh, in the classic viewer in Cognos 11. And remember, all upgraded reports come over set to use the classic viewer. And then if you wanted to switch them to use the interactive viewer, you would edit them, change the property uh, for full interactivity from no to yes. 
New reports will default that property to yes, and you can set it to no if you would prefer to use the classic viewer for a new report. Um, questions about transformer. Uh, upgrading a power cube. The cubes themselves, the MDC files, don't need to change. Uh, you can just copy those over, create, uh, point your data sources to them, and voila, they'll work. Um, however, there is a PowerPlay Transformer 11 that you can install, and you can open your MDL files. They'll auto-upgrade. You can um, leverage uh, this 11 uh, PowerPlay against your 11010 server if you're using reports or framework models as sources for your transformer cubes. So that is all baked into this Transformer 11. Remember, Transformer 11 is part of your BI license, so that's something that you, uh, you all can download if you are current on your uh, Cognos uh, Analytics Maintenance. Um, uh, PowerPlay uh, Transformer 11 will be there. By the by, if there's any folks on the phone who are PowerPlay Studio or PowerPlay Client users, again, if you are current on your maintenance, you can download version 11 of those products as well and integrate those into your Cognos 11 environment in terms of Cognos Analytics as a, a back-end web component to those uh, tools. Um, but otherwise, your know, power cubes have not changed. The transformer tool still works exactly the way it did. Um, transformer 11 um, does integrate with um, uh, Cognos Analytics 11. Um, and PowerPlay Studio 11 is actually a much easier integration to Cognos 11 than previous versions because PowerPlay Studio 10.2.2 used to be able to be integrated into Cognos 11, but it was work. Now is, there's no work. You make one simple configuration in PowerPlay Studio 11 and it just integrates into your Cognos 11 environment. Had a question about his lineage um, back in CA. Yep, it sure is. So the lineage uh, tool is part of Cognos Analytics. Um, 1108 or 1109 is where they reintroduced that in the interactive mode. And um, so, yes, absolutely that is there. Um, there's a question here about migrating reports from CQM to DQM, um, which actually is a webinar on, uh, in and of itself in terms of um, uh, answers to that. Um, and the, the number of issues that you might encounter actually is entirely independent of Cognos 11 because you'd encounter the very same uh, potential issues converting from compatible query mode to dynamic query mode uh, in Cognos 10. So from that perspective, that's not a, an upgrade question as much as it is a uh, migration uh, of your query modes question. But let me say this about that. First of all, if you think that a CQM to DQM webinar uh, that's focused on that migration makes sense for you guys, you'd be interested in attending, please enter that in the chat window now. Um, and if we have enough interest, I will absolutely put together a more detailed look at that migration. Um, but in terms of Cognos 11, there is a mistaken belief that you must upgrade from CQM to DQM in order to migrate to Cognos 11. Um, let me say that that is true only if you are moving to the cloud version of Cognos 11. So if you're migrating to the IBM cloud as part of your upgrade, absolutely you have to make the migration to dynamic query mode as part of that. However, if you are installing Cognos 11 on-premise, uh, then you do not need to migrate to dynamic query mode uh, before you could upgrade from 10 to 11. 11 on-premise supports your compatible query mode queries in exactly the way that Cognos 10 did. There's also a misunderstanding about dynamic query mode when it comes to packages in reports, uh, 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 pardon me, packages in dashboards. The, uh, the misunderstanding is that only dynamic query mode packages can be used to source visualizations in a dashboard. That's not true. I can use a compatible query mode package as a source in a dashboard in two circumstances. The first is that that package represents a power cube. Uh, power cubes do not have a dynamic query mode option. Therefore, they uh, um, are not part of the um, 
limitation of using dynamic query mode only. Um, and second of all, it's not really a limitation. The uh, important thing to note about So the second misunderstanding about compatible query mode and dynamic query mode it has to do with sourcing dashboards from packages. The misunderstanding is that your package must be dynamic query mode to be used in a dashboard. That is incorrect. Um, there are two circumstances under which a compatible query mode package will work to source a dashboard. The first is that that package represents a power cube. Power cubes only run in compatible query mode. They're perfectly valid as data sources in your dashboard. The second thing is this, your compatible query mode package points to a data source. In many cases, data sources can have both a CQM and a DQM definition. In other words, when I configure my SQL Server or my Oracle data source, let's say, I have the option to configure a JDBC component on either of those, and I can enable that or not when I set up my data source. If I have enabled the JDBC definition in the data source, despite my package having been published in compatible mode, I can leverage that package in a dashboard, and the dashboard will use the JDBC data source definition to access the data. So you see it's not about the compatibility mode of the package, it's about the presence of a dynamic query mode definition in the data source. So hopefully that clears that up. In terms of configuration, there are a whole lot of questions here relative to configuration. And a lot of them are about, can I still do SSL? Absolutely. You configure your web server to support SSL. Uh, again, if you're using IIS, use the script. You know, my configuration and security settings that are in 10, do they come over to 11? Yes. Are they respected in 11? Yes. Do by and large they all work? Yes. Um, you know, is it a, a good opportunity to revisit and maybe simplify? <laughs> yes. So you may want to consider that. Um, ODBC uh, connections still work. Again, if you're using new servers, be sure you edit the 32 bit ODBC definitions and add in the definitions um, or export them from your old server and import them on your new server. But all of that stuff works. When you move your content, um, one of the two ways I described earlier, do your scheduled jobs come over? Absolutely. Should you be sure when you're running in parallel to disable those jobs on Cognos 11 temporarily? Um, absolutely. Otherwise, you'll, they'll run twice. They'll run in your 10 and they'll run in your 11 environment. It's, a, it's a, a, an easy oversight when you import your content or you just point Cognos to a copy of your content store database. When you up, bring up 11, those schedules will run. So you want to be sure you go in and disable those um, or follow the, uh, the knowledge base article um, about uh, removing those schedules from your content store um, in 11 before you uh, bring, it on, uh, bring it online. Um, cafe, is there a cafe that works with Cognos Analytics? Absolutely there is. It's actually cafe 1022. Just be sure you have the latest fix pack installed. Um, uh, Office 2016 is now supported. Uh, uh, I don't know when that was added. I know it wasn't supported in earlier versions of 11. I checked the supported environments page uh, for Cognos 11010 and Office 2016 is listed there. So that answer is yes, 2016 is supported. Can I access TM1 dimensional data? Absolutely. Um, you can access TM1 version 1022 as a data source. You can also access planning analytics premise um, as a data source. So depending on whether or not you've upgraded your planning analytics um, or TM1 side, um, you can access either. Um, we've talked about how to upgrade content. We've talked about um, IIS. Groups and roles did not change in Cognos 11 much. However, there are new roles in Cognos 11 you may want to take advantage of. Take a look at the role list after you upgrade. And you'll notice new roles that match your licenses. Analytics user, Analytics Explorer, um, uh, Information Distribution, Analytics um, Administrator. Those 
map to the license tracking tool in 11, and you may find that you want to map some folks to those roles. Um, so you have those new options in terms of roles in 11, uh, but all of the old roles that you're used to, author, consumer, and so on, those are all there. Um, there are new capabilities to control dashboards, data modules, which is called web-based modeling, by the way, and that sort of thing. Do look at the supported environments page. I have a number of questions here about database support. Is my SQL Server going to be supported? Is the uh, Do I have to upgrade SQL Server in order to use um, Cognos? And the best answer to that is going to be by reading the supported environments page and be sure that you are on the supported uh, versions of databases, especially the supported versions for your content store databases. So the compatibility list always changes. Yes, older versions of SQL Server specifically uh, have been deprecated. SQL Server 2008 and earlier are no longer officially supported. So the answer might be yes, you do need to upgrade SQL Server as part of planning for your Cognos Analytics upgrade. Talked a bit about your legacy components already. Um, all of your content upgrades, all of it runs. Cognos Workspace, I didn't mention earlier, but it still works. Um, the question is, should I still use them? Uh, the short answer is no. You should not be creating new objects in those tools. You should be moving to the dashboard tool and the reporting tool as your only two tools. Those, and then migrate your workspaces, migrate your Query Studio and Analysis Studio reports to the new tools. But you can do that on-premise after you upgrade. It is not a prerequisite to upgrading. Got a lot of questions about portlets. The portal tabs that we used in Cognos 10 and before are not part of Cognos 11. They're still not part of Cognos 11. Um, IBM product management has stated that on their roadmap, portlets are um, uh, to return in some shape or form. Um, I have no details beyond that. Um, uh, we would need to look to IBM to provide any details. Um, and, uh, and in general, my friends at IBM are um, uh, not uh, going to really share a lot of specifics or timing about future releases. But I will say this, the notion of portlets and the portal tabs, that's an RFE entry. If that's important to you as part of your upgrade, uh, please be sure you go to the RFE site, register and vote for those enhancements to keep them high and in front of the product management team who's making decisions about releases and timing. And then finally, a number of miscellaneous questions. Uh, the first one being about Modio. Uh, Modio does indeed have a version that works with Cognos 11. Uh, you will have to install that on your Cognos 11 server after you've configured Cognos Analytics. Uh, so, you know, you can't use the exact same C10 install kit that you had for Modio. You'll have to go um, and work with Modio to get their C11 kit downloaded, and then you can install it and integrate it. But they absolutely have been keeping up to date with the Cognos 11 software. If you have SDK routines that you've been using in Cognos 10, uh, in general, I haven't found that you have to modify them a tremendous amount, if at all, but you do need to recompile them. So do install the Cognos 11 OX SDK kit and uh, recompile your code. And in general, what we found is the SDK software uh, in general works with the 11 release once you've recompiled. As far as the process for applying fix packs, getting fix packs or interim fixes, nothing about that has changed. You still go to Fix Central, look up the release and operating system that you have, and if there are fixes available, they'll be available for download there. One thing to be aware of, though, is those fix pack downloads or those interim fix downloads, those are full-on install kits. Uh, in other words, you could use that download to install a brand new server as well as you could use that download to uh, patch an existing server. So if you're the sort of person who allows a new release to marinate for a while before you install it, then my advice to you would be when you are ready to install uh, and upgrade to the next release uh, or, for, or just install the, let's say, the current release for the very first time, first go to Fix Central and examine and see whether or not there is an interim fix or a fix pack there. If there is, 
regardless of whether you're patching or installing for the first time, download the kit from there because you can use that kit to either patch an existing install or begin a brand new install. And if there is nothing available, on Fix Central for the release you're interested in, that's when I would switch over to Passport Advantage to download the software from there. In terms of lessons learned and any precautions, I hope that this webinar uh, with all these questions and answers has provided you with the lessons that LPA has learned as well as the precautions that we think are most important. If the person who submitted the request for lessons learned um, has additional questions or needs more information, uh, please reach out to us directly and I'd be happy to provide you with more info. Questions on upgrading from 1109, is it easy to go to 1110? Frankly, the process to go from 110X to 110Y is generally the same and is in general very easy. You know, if you're looking for, you know, how much time should I set aside? You know, I would estimate in general two hours per server. I think that's very conservative. Of course, I would shut down my environment, uh, you know, front back. In other words, you know, my web servers go, then my apps go, and then my CM goes. And then I would patch and bring up in the same order. I would patch my CMs. I bring those up, then I'd patch my apps, I'd bring those up, and then I finally patch my gateway, my web tier, and bring that up. And then do remember what I told you earlier about always reconfiguring your web server like IIS or Apache uh, whenever you upgrade to be sure you are following the most recent set of instructions or using, for an IIS perspective anyway, the most recently uh, automated script. And then finally, there's a question here about users having the ability to cancel their own running reports through the My Schedules and Subscriptions. That feature was not part of 11.0.10, so that was not a specific enhancement in 11.0.10. If this is an important enhancement for your organization, I believe the best process for you to follow would be to go to the RFE site, register and create a profile if you don't already have one. If you do, search for a uh, subscription and schedule enhancement like this one. If it's there, vote for it. If it's not there, go ahead and add the enhancement and vote for it. And then, of course, let other folks in your organization know to go out and vote for it as well. It is the RFEs that get the most votes that IBM product management will consider for inclusion and in future releases. And that is by far the fastest and I think most direct way for you to get the importance of this particular enhancement in front of IBM product management. Well, we've run out of time for today. I want to thank you very much for attending today's webinar, and I hope I'll see you on future webinars very, very soon. Speaking of future webinars, if you have ideas for webinars on analytics topics that you would like LPA to present, before you exit uh, WebEx today, do please use the chat and send us your ideas. Um, we uh, would love to hear from you and know that the webinar topics that we are producing are exactly the ones that would make uh, the most sense for you to attend. So thank you in advance for that input. And once again, thank you so much for spending time with me today. We'll see you soon.